Hi, this is Natural Health for All Ages. I'm Dr. Wagner, Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine, which is just a branch of medicine that looks to use natural substances to help a person's body heal itself. Now, today our topic is natural health for your mood. How do you maintain a healthy mood? Um, my daughter made this little thing for me and I thought it was really cute. Here's this like frazzled looking little person with a smile on their face. <laughs> So, you know, even in the midst of stress, like we're coming up on a lot of holidays, um, you know, people having parties, um, you know, some people get, you know, stress, they get anxiety, some people get depression, um, you know, or irritability. So we're just going to talk a little bit about things that you can use naturally to help to maintain a, a stable mood and a good mood. Um, so. A lot of these things you can use on an acute basis. Say you have like an acute stress and you're looking for some temporary help. And a lot of times you can use, you know, different ways to improve your health so that your body functions better and your mind will function better as well because it's all connected. Your brain is not separate from your body. All the same blood and the same body chemistry is flowing through the whole thing. But there are some people who it's a chronic state where they either have a, you know, a chronic issue with depression or anxiety or you know, irritability. And sometimes it's, it might not be a steady state, but it comes and goes and it's always the same pattern. So we're looking at some ways you know, just to support the body. Um, you know, there are a lot of medicines out there that people rely on for mood disorders. And a lot of them have side effects and some work better for some people, other ones, you know, control some of their symptoms, but they don't have a full relief. Um, but if you are on any medications, just make sure that you double check with your doctor or, or a, you know, professional, like a naturopath or some other health professional, to make sure that these products are not contraindicated for your medications, because sometimes there is, um, there can be a problem by using both at the same time. Other ones there's not any problems with, but just be sure to check. Um, so, well, you know, what you're looking for is, you know, looking at your, you as an individual. Not everybody has the same depression, not everybody has the same anxiety, what symptoms they have, what sets them off. So as a, you know, as a healthcare practitioner, what you're really looking for is, you know, what is different about you? How does it affect you? What are your symptoms? Um, you know, the mind, the body, how is the whole picture, you know, presenting itself and what caused the stress. People react to different stresses. Um, you're also looking at, you know, what can affect the, the mind. You know, there's different things like malnutrition. If all those good chemicals that your body makes to produce its own feel good, um, you know, peppy, happy, you know, relaxed chemicals, they're all made out of proteins. And those proteins are put together using vitamins and minerals and trace minerals good essential fats, if you're lacking in those, your body's going to suffer. So you can't just pop a pill and just eat, you know, cookies and pop all day and expect that your health is going to improve. It's a whole thing. It's all the body chemistry. So definitely look at nutrition. Make sure that you have the protein, that you have the, the vitamins, but mostly um, for the mind, it's the minerals that are a little bit more important than the vitamins even, um, though the B vitamins are very important. Also, food sensitivities. Um, food sensitivities are not like a, an allergic reaction, like you're going to blow up and have trouble breathing, but they're, sometimes people do have a, a low-grade immune reaction to certain proteins or certain substances th that they eat, which causes just a low-level infl inflammatory state, which also affects the brain. The brain also is affected by the body's inflammation. It can get irritated, the tissues there, which can affect the mood. So if you're having, um, you know, problems, then you do a food diary, check to see if your mood depends on what you ate in the last couple of days. Um, do an elimination diet where you take out all the regular things that you eat. Um, maybe, you know, it's, you're going to eat, you know, turkey and pears or something something that you don't commonly eat all the time and eat that, get rid of the things that you commonly eat and then introduce them over time to see if your symptoms flare up at a certain food. There's a, there's a good brain, they talk a little bit about nutrition as well, but it's fascinating called brain allergies. Um, but it also has a little bit about, you know, reactions to foods, but also um, 
certain people, if they're lacking certain nutrition or maybe their body requires certain higher doses of nutrition than most people need, um, then that can be very helpful as well. So it's just a, a readily available book that's interesting as well. Also, you know, food colorings, food preservatives, um, additives, those all have neurological associated side effects to them. Some people are more sensitive than others. So again, you know, do a food diet. If you notice every time you eat like a red coloring, um, you know, you become anxious or every time that um, your child eats a certain food coloring or preservative and they become more angry and aggressive. Um, you know, you can do your own research that way. Also, you know, eat less processed foods because those are not going to have those chemicals in there. So anything that you go out in nature, you can pick an apple, you can, you know, get a chicken, you can grab a fish, you can have a, a broccoli, anything that you can just go out in nature and get that's less processed, that's not, you know, dried and pulverized and baked and bleached and um, colorized and preserved, all those chemicals are going to decrease the nutritional content of your food. So anything that you can get that's less processed is going to have a lot of those um, vitamins and minerals and the protein in it um, that you need. Though sometimes, you know, depending on how depleted the soil is, even some of the unprocessed things do not have the nutrition that they should have nowadays. You know, depending on the soil content. So if the soil's good and the soil's rich, it's going to have good nutrition um, in the food. But sometimes, you know, with fertilizer, they just add things that make the plant have a good yield and not necessarily have all those good trace minerals in it. Um, essential fats, you know, again, those things, all your cells in your brain and everywhere, uh, all your hormones have uh, are made of their essential fats and all your cells have like a nice little ball of essential fats around them that makes them fluid so they can bring in the nutrition they need and get rid of the garbage that they don't need. Um, so you definitely need the good fats to maintain that flexibility, not too flexible, not too rigid, whereas if you're having the hydrogenated fats, um, the trans fats, um, those are going to, they don't function because they don't have the, the proper shape to them. So it'll screw up your, your hormones and your, um, just your general inflammatory state. Um, also your blood sugar, if your, if your blood sugar is not adequate or it's fluctuating quickly, then it's definitely going to affect your mind. Um, sometimes your blood sugar doesn't necessarily go above a normal level, like what you would be diagnosed as diabetes, and it doesn't go low enough so you'd be considered hypoglycemic, but sometimes it's the rate of drop. So if you ate a bunch of, you know, sugar or something that is turned into sugar very readily, made your blood sugar zoom up and then it dropped quickly, maybe not to the level that you'd be diagnosed as hypoglycemia, but just a fast drop because that big inrush of sugar stimulates the, the pancreas to pour out a lot of insulin into the body, which will all of a sudden take all the sugar out. So it's like your brain all of a sudden has a lot of sugar and then it has no sugar available. So that just that extreme change can cause irritability, can cause depression, it can cause anxiety. Um, a lot of people, if they notice that if they haven't eaten for a while and they become shaky and irritable, they have a blood sugar problem. Um, other times, you know, it's like if they eat some more sugar, then they feel better. Um, so that's an indication as well. And also, if you eat a lot of things that are changed into sugar readily, that's going to deplete a lot of the nutrition that the brain needs to make its own feel-good chemicals like the B vitamins and the magnesium. So all those are depleted and the zinc, they're going to be depleted with a high sugar diet because sugar brings in calories, but it doesn't bring in nutrition. So your body has to use up the nutrition it has to digest those and process that, those calories. Also, you know, on a, a monthly irregularity, so women, if they, they might have certain symptoms show up, um, you know, in their PMS, like depression or irritability, things like that. Um, you know, pain, if people have chronic inflammation, that definitely can affect their mood. Maybe they didn't have a mood problem to begin with, but since they have chronic pain, now they're depressed or they have anxiety about their health or, you know, they're just irritable because they're always in pain. Um, you know, and also the, the way we live nowadays, you know, if you're in a if you're inside a building, you're not getting fresh air, you're not getting fresh oxygen. You know, the, the sunshine and the bright lights, it really helps your brain, you know, goes through your eyes to your pineal gland, 
which affects how your brain functions. So if you're stuck in an office building, and especially with fluorescent lights, over time fluorescent lights can deplete your B vitamins as well, um, which are essential to your mood. So if you're just stuck in an office building, that can be a problem as well. And fresh air, instead of you know having recirculated air, you know, especially when you're traveling or in an office building, you know, fresh air with that oxygen supply, um, you know, can really affect the mood as well. So you just want to, you know, for those, you know, just simple things, make sure your diet's good and that you're getting some fresh air and some sunlight. Get, you know, don't use the sunglasses all the time because your eyes need that feedback to the brain. Um, you know, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, depression first. Like if your mood is constantly low or if somebody, you know, has a loss and they just can't seem to recover for it, from it, um, what are some things that they can use, you know, generally to help that? And one is, you know, the essential fats. So, you know, if you have a couple thousand milligrams a day of your essential fatty acids, that can really boost, you know, brain function, help the mood improve. Um, you also want to look if somebody has low thyroid function because that will depress the whole metabolism of the whole body, which can affect the mood. Um, you know, and if someone has a lab that says that everything is correct, well, sometimes there still is a thyroid issue in that, you know, you check your basal body temperature, put a thermometer like under your arm in the morning before you get up. Um, you know, if it's chronically low, then a lot of times you have a thyroid problem even though you're your blood level, like your TSH, says that it's normal. And sometimes there's a, a problem in changing your thyroid hormone into the active hormone or the receptors aren't working right. Um, actually, one of these, uh, the tyrosine, is actually used for, um, to help the thyroid if it's not producing enough thyroid hormone to begin with, if that's the problem, not the conversion, and et cetera. Um, but this also helps the brain. Tyrosine is an amino acid that also helps the brain have that get up and go, like more like, you know, ambitious kind of thing instead of like feeling like, oh, I don't want to do anything. Um, it can also help the brain in that way. So it's an amino acid made out of protein. Look for low adrenal function as well, which gives you that energy. And if you have like, you know, too much um, stress, if you had too much um, sugar, like a bad diet, that you're depleting the, the chromium and the B vitamins that the, the adrenal glands need. Then a lot of people have like chronic fatigue and they have, um, you know, just a sort of depression. They don't want to do anything. They're very tired. Um, also look for the B vitamins. B vitamins, again, they're depleted by many things and you need them um, to support the brain and for the brain to produce its own feel-good chemicals. Um, also B12, a lot of people, um, as they age especially, they lose the ability to absorb B12 properly. You need a chemical in your stomach to be released in order to, um, you know, bind to the B12 and have it absorbed. If you lose that ability, then a lot of times your energy level goes down. That can lead to depression, low energy as well, which that can be fixed easily. Try sublingual B12 supplement or you can get shots as well. Um, you know, low, low neurotransmitters also, a lot of these um, supplements I have up here, again, you need a good diet because chronic stress especially will deplete your own brain chemicals that are your feel-good ones, like your serotonin and your, your dopamine and things like that. Um, over time, if you have a lot of stress, they will get used up. And what they're made out of is protein and they're made using your minerals and your vitamins and um, your essential fats um, along the way. Um, but you can supplement them. Like if you're, if you're low on like your serotonin, you can, um, I don't have the 5-HTP here, but 5-HTP is a precursor to your serotonin. It's very easy to supplement it. A lot of people have a fast-acting result to it. It is an amino acid, so you don't want to have it with protein food because then they, they all compete, you know, to get into the brain at the same time. So either eat it with a little bit of a carb or, um, you know, on an empty stomach. But that can boost your own natural serotonin. In the meantime, while you, if you change your diet, add some protein and some good nutrition to help your brain make more of its own, it's kind of like, you know, to build up your supply, with a supplement and then you can, as your brain is making more of its own, then you can s decrease how much you're taking. Um, also, you can use taurine as well. 
is kind of it's it's on a precursor to make your good um, neurotransmitters as well. So if the 5-HTP isn't working well, you can also use St. John's wort, which is an herb that increases your serotonin as well. Um, other times, if your dopamine is low, like if somebody weeps really easily, if they're crying at commercials, if they can't handle any type of pain, physical or mental, a lot of times their own dopamine is depleted. And the way um, you can help supplement that is... Two of them here. Yeah, the one up here. Um, there's either you can use the L-phenylalanine or the D-L-phenylalanine, which has the two types of the the phenylalanine, and this is a precursor to making your serotonin and your own natural dopamine. So if someone, especially if they've had chronic pain, if someone has chronic pain, a lot of times your natural dopamine has been depleted over time. Um, so this is a good way to help support your brain to have more of those feel-good chemicals. And it's not addictive, um, and you can find it readily in health food stores, and you can try that as well. Um, also, you know, if you have seasonal affective disorder, again, in the wintertime, if there's not enough light, you're not getting that feedback to the brain and the pineal gland that's saying, okay, you know, this is the, the impulse to make good things, you know, get some sun if you can go out at lunchtime, even on a cloudy day, most of the sun, you know, the brightness is there at least. Um, you can, you know, take off the sunglasses, get out in the sun as much as possible, you know, go out at lunchtime, or like if you're a third shift, you know, worker, try to get some um, sun exposure that's not in tinted glass, so you're getting like the real brightness of the sun, or get a sun bo or a light box. You can get light boxes that you can use just for 15 minutes a day and just read under them or do your sewing or you know, a project under there, do homework under the lights. You need that that brightness of the light for just about 15 minutes a day, and that can actually a lot of times help people with depression. It can help with sleep problems, um, you know, especially if you notice that your symptoms are worse in the wintertime when there's less daylight um, for the seasonal affective disorder. Um, you know, so other supplements that you can take, you know, besides the, the EFAs, the B12, um, you know, the 5-HTP. Homeopathic remedies also. I like to use homeopathic remedies because I find they affect the, the mental, emotional um, range of symptoms very well. Um, and what you're looking for in the homeopathic remedies is that you ne really need to match up your symptoms to a remedy that's known to help that type of um, symptom complex that you have. Because, again, not everybody experiences depression the same way. Not everybody expresses, you know, anxiety in the same way. Not everybody has the same triggers. Some people want company, other people don't want company. They have physical symptoms along with, um, you know, the, the mood problem. Um, so again, I would suggest seeing a professional for a homeopathic intake, but they can work very quickly and they can work very well um, on the mental emotional sphere as well. Also Bach flower remedies, which are related to homeopathic remedies. These are a couple that are known um, for depression. Um, the mustard is one where it's, you know, it's that kind of like that deep despair. And it's like a lot of times it comes on for no reason. It's like, why am I feeling so horrible and so depressed? And really my life isn't that bad compared to a lot of other people's. Um, but a lot of times mustard is known for that. And these are really easy to take. They're just in drops. And you just take about six drops a couple times a day. Um, you know, away from other food and drink, and um, a lot of times they can support um, a healthy mood. Uh, the other one is olive that I have here, is that, you know, when people are really exhausted and weary, they've been through a lot, and they just feel like they just don't have the strength to, you know, go on. Um, they don't have the energy. They just want to sleep and, you know, forget about trying in life. Um, so olive is another good one. Um, there's other ones, you know, like if um, Star of Bethlehem is a good one, which I think it might be in the Rescue Remedy. Um, but it's also, it's for great distress. Like if you had like a really bad um, experience or a death of a, a loved one and you can't get over it, then Star of Bethlehem is, um, is uh, yeah, it's in here. But this is Rescue Remedy, which I'll talk a little bit more about for anxiety, but it's a combination of several of the Bach flower remedies um, that are more known for 
like a rescue. Like generally if you're having like a severe um, event and you need some help with the mental, emotional, like anxiety, distress, um, you know, despair, then a lot of times people find that rescue remedy can help them through an acute, um, you know, problem. And of course, you know, it's natural to feel, you know, depression if you lost a loved one or sad if something bad in your life happens, but you don't want to necessarily be stuck there and limited and you can't function. So these are some, you know, helps in that direction. So when you're talking about anxiety, that's another state that a lot of people have, you know, around this time of year. They're trying to plan things and making sure things go right. And a lot of people have it on a chronic basis, you know, with their jobs or with their family. Um, you know, so some things to look for. If it comes out of the blue, you might want to check, you know, like your thyroid function because a high thyroid function can actually make you have anxiety and that jitteriness and like everything's your heart's pounding and it feels like anxiety. Um, but it's a thyroid problem, so you can get that checked as well, especially if you notice that your pulse is, is fast and you're generally feeling hot when you didn't used to feel hot. Um, again, you know, B vitamin deficiency, which there's, you know, the medications can deplete B vitamins, the fluorescent lights, you know, the, your foods you know, that you're eating. So they can also affect your level of anxiety as well. Again, the low blood sugar, like if people are you know, have that dip in the blood sugar and their brain cells are looking for something to live on and they're kind of like, yeah, we need something and your liver and your adrenal glands are trying to mobilize the sugar, you can get anxiety as well because it's releasing your adrenaline and you're kind of getting that fight or flight kind of symptom picture. Um, you know, if you have a past fright, like if something, if you're stuck, if you had like an accident or some occurrence in your life and you just, um, since that moment on, you've been more anxious and you're anxious in certain situations, and that can be a causative factor, which that, you know, homeopathic remedies or the Bach flower remedies can help in that situation too, help to get, try to get the brain to get past that, that circular motion of always going through the same thoughts and the same process. Um, again, your low serotonin, low GABA. GABA is another amino acid like the L-tyrosine and the L-taurine, um, and what it does is generally just calms, you know, the restlessness down, like instead of being so hyper and you can't sit still, a lot of times, this is G-A-B-A, GABA, it's for gamma amino butyric acid, um, but a lot of times on the bottle in the health food stores, it just says GABA, G-A-B-A, -A. Um, and it helps a lot of times with that restlessness, not being able to sit still and not being able to, um, you know, concentrate and just, um, so that can be a good help as well. Also, mitral valve prolapse. Um, a lot of people get anxiety when they have mitral valve prolapse. And it's a physical kind of a manifestation of itself. Um, so, you know, that can sometimes improve with the magnesium and lowering the sugar content and getting some of your good nutrition as well. Um, but what you can do also for anxiety, you know, get your B vitamins. Make sure your diet is, you know, not depleting them as well. Um, there are natural forms of lithium you can take, not like the drugs, the medications with lithium in it. They have a very narrow window of safety. Natural lithium, you can use it in small amounts and that can help as well. Um, it's perfectly safe. Um, you know, stabilize your blood sugar. You know, make sure you have enough chromium and zinc to, you know, help your body stabilize itself, but also, you know, get more protein in your diet. You know, make sure you're, you're getting your magnesium. Herbs, there's some herbs. Like there's some valerian in here, which is a very good calming herb. Um, it smells good too. You can put it in your, you know, your pillowcase. Um, you know, just smelling it a lot of times has a calming thing. You can you can find lavender in bath salts, so you can take a bath to help you sleep. Because sometimes with anxiety that you have trouble sleeping, um, so that is useful as well. There's also an herb called skull cap, which is actually very soothing and calming. A lot of people like chamomile as well. You can use it as a tea or as a tincture. Um, you can use the passion flower and valerian and kava as well. Those are some good herbs to use. Um, you know, along with the, the taurine. You can actually, there's a product called de-stress. It's actually made from a milk protein. And I find that this actually works pretty good. Um, 
for a lot of even acute um, anxieties, like if you're somebody's afraid of something in a certain situation, or just in periods of, of time where you're having a lot of stress, just to take you just take one a day, and it just helps the the mind not get caught up in the anxiety. Just be able to you know function and um, but not have all those physical symptoms of anxiety. Um, also, you know, exercise. Exercise gets rid of your adrenaline, helps you calm down. You know, deep breathing. There's a lot of good homeopathic remedies also for anxiety, like aconite or arsenicum or um, you know nitric acid or argentum nitricum. But again, see a professional for you know those situations. Um, there are other Bach flower remedies for anxiety. Um, you know, such as rock rose. Um, Mimulus, aspen, crab apple. Crab apple is like, you know, kind of like this time of year where you're planning lots of things and you're, you're really anxious about all the details. You can't sleep. You're thinking about every last thing where it's, you know, well, you know, you, most normal time if you're, if you're feeling okay, it's like, you know, the details can slide. You know, it's the big picture that matters. Um, you know, but there's actually some good books out there for Bach flower remedies. You can find them, um, you know, at the health food store. You can find them online. You know, they have they all have a little bit of a, a symptom picture to themselves. Um, like the rock rose is, you know, for great suddenness, like of a great fear, like an accident or something that happened, and maybe you're kind of stuck in that situation. Um, mimulus, which... I don't have out here, but mimulus is fear of like known things. Like if so, if someone's afraid of flying, or if they're afraid of the dark, or something that's known, then you can use that also to help minimize that. So that's you know one resource. Um, there's you know lots of books on black black flower remedies out there. Um, so there are you know additional help. You know look for your um, your nutritional deficiencies. Uh, look for, you know, what is happening in your life, try to help, you know, live healthy, in a healthy way, because that's going to help not only your body, but also your mind. Um, if you need some, you know, additional help, there's always professionals out there that either do herbs or a naturopathic physician that can really help determine where, you know, the problem is and to help overcome that. Um, as well as, you know, see to your, if you're in a really bind, you know, see your medical professional, professional if you need, you know, instant help and you think that you're going to be in, you know, some serious trouble there. Um, but, you know, natural medicine has a lot of things to help and to help stabilize mood and to help people maintain that. So again, this was Natural Health for All Ages and this is Dr. Wagner and thank you for turn, tuning in.